Uh, my name is Sonia and I am the Female Development Officer for the Irish Ice Hockey Association. I was asked to do this video, um, which I really didn't want to do because I don't like talking uh, on camera, but anyway, I was dragged into it. Um, and I suppose I've got to help in the campaign to show you what our wonderful association does. Um, as I said, I'm the Female Development Officer, so my job is to get females playing hockey. Um, I'm going to give you a bit of history first about women's hockey in Ireland and then I will tell you what the plans are um, for this year and beyond. So um, I'm playing hockey since 2007 and I suppose that's when female hockey really started off in Ireland. Now I am aware that there was girls playing back in the rinks in, in Dolphins Barn and Fibsborough that Will Fitzgerald was talking about but the first ever only um, all-female ice hockey team was formed in February 2007 back in the ice dome days. Basically uh, there was a group of girls who were playing hockey with the boys. Um, there was enough of us so we decided that we would set up our, our own team. Um, quickly uh, obviously um, it grew in popularity and more and more females uh, decided to join our team. So we had about 25 members at one stage. Um, our first tournament uh, was in 2008. This was in Riga in Latvia and was organised by our good friend uh, Janik Gerkina, who was a referee here for us for a number of years. Uh, Janik's gone back to Latvia now and she's still refereeing over there, but a big, big supporter of the Irish Ice Hockey Association. Um, when we went to, to Latvia, we played against some fantastic teams. Um, our team was made up primarily of, I suppose, maybe over over 16 and upwards um, and we played some junior teams over there we played senior teams and the level was absolutely phenomenal and it really opened our eyes as, as to what we needed to do with female hockey in Ireland. Uh, on coming home uh, we joined the Development League which would have been the C League um, under the IAHA at the time and things really really snowballed from there. Um, after that, more and more girls obviously became more interested in the sport and the female game was growing. So it was decided that we would set up um, a female ice league, which again was successful right up until the closure of um, the Ice Dome in 2010. 2008, I suppose, was a very important year for women's hockey. So not only was our first club in Ireland heading away to a tournament, but our, um, our women's national development team was, was also formed. Um, the IHA um, entered us into a competition called the NT Cup in Sweden. Um, and this was in a little town called North Chipping in Sweden. Um, again, it was a fantastic tournament for us. Players, coaches, spectators couldn't believe that we were only playing um, a year. Like some of us hadn't hadn't even skated really much before that, so they were actually quite overwhelmed with the talent that we had, and knew that we could go quite far if we had the facilities. So we kept on training, and we returned to Sweden again. Then the second year, um, this is a nice picture of some of the girls. The Irish women's national development team were dabbing before dabbing was even invented. So there's something for you. I'm just going to find the other um picture of the Swedish trip in 2009 um bear with me yeah that's it there uh, 2009 was also successful um in that we held the first ever ladies tournament in the dundalk ice dome this was run by a good friend of mine shauna conway if you're watching back over in uh, Cleveland, we all say hello. Uh, Sean had done phenomenal work for, for women's hockey when she was here as well. Um, she was our goaltender for the national team. But Sean had come up with a great idea of organising a women's tourna tournament um, in aid of the Irish Cancer Society. So we got teams over from um, Alaska, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and the Lady Bulls were the winners of that tournament. So again, it was a great success um, for female Irish um, hockey. Also that year, the Lady Bulls travelled to the Ice Girls tournament in Latvia and came second in that, which was a massive achievement. So there was silverware for the Lady Bulls twice in, in 2009. So moving on to 2010, as I said, we had the Ladies Ice Hockey League and this was still running successfully until the closure of the Ice Dome. Um, from that Ladies League, the IIHA decided that they would like to send away an all-star team um, and this all-star team 
um, were players from each of the three teams that participated in the female ice hockey league. So they were the Cubs, the Vixens and ourselves, the Lady Bulls. And this is just a little picture of us here um, in the Dundalk Ice Dome after one of our training sessions before we headed off to Latvia. Um, so that was another great year. We got an international tournament under our belt and more and more experience. Um, and I suppose this experience was very important because in 2011 we travelled, um, the national team, the, um, the Irish women's national team I should say, travelled to Sofia in Bulgaria to participate in Division 5 of the World Championships. Um, unfortunately the ice dome had closed at that stage so our players our coaches and our managers uh, made massive sacrifices like everyone did to play in ice hockey in Ireland um, travelling to late night sessions in Dundonald International Ice Bowl in Belfast um, taking any ice time that we, we could possibly get uh, we did a lot a lot of off ice training a lot of um, roller hockey training just anything to, to try and prepare us um, for these championships Um Unfortunately, we, we didn't place in the championship, but we did OK for a team who didn't have an ice rink. Again, we had spectators uh, commenting on, on how good we were and they couldn't believe that, that we didn't have an ice rink, you know. Um, so I suppose that was a, an achievement um, for women's ice hockey. Um, we, we put our name on the map. And people knew that we existed. Um, we also got the pleasure of meeting um, the Irish ambassador um, in Bulgaria at the time. It was um, St. Patrick's weekend, actually, we were playing. Um, and we had a day off on St. Patrick's Day. And we were invited to um, a very lavish meal. Met a lot of different Bulgarian uh, delegates and politicians. Um, met the ambassador uh, himself and his wife. Um, and they actually came to our game, I think, two days later. Um, and they wore all the, the Irish get up. They had their tricolours and they had their hats and everything. And it was just, it was such a lovely, lovely feeling to have um, people supporting you. People that didn't even know us supporting us, but they were so proud to be Irish that they came and, and they supported us. And it was just, it was a fantastic time. Uh, after we, we came back, we, we still trained. Again, it was quite hard. We took any ice time that we could. Um Unfortunately, some girls, they, they stop playing hockey and, you know, I want to keep this, this video as positive as I possibly can. But, you know, having a, having no facility is obviously going to have an ill effect on, on the game. So a lot of girls decided that, you know, they'd finished with, with ice hockey and they didn't stay and play roller hockey, you know. So we would love to get them back. Um, but I suppose they're only going to come back if we have the, the adequate facilities, you know. Um, so a lot of us continued and we continued travelling to Belfast. We continued playing in line um, and we went off to Turkey in December 2012 for the World Championship qualifiers. Um, again, this was a fantastic tournament for us. We won um, a Fair Play Award. We were the least penalised team. Um, um, in 2012, uh, we still had a number of girls playing for different clubs um, across Ireland uh, playing roller hockey. So in 2013 and 2014, uh, we decided to, to form a team and go over to Slovenia and take part um, in a tournament there. Um, 2014 was the successful year for us for roller hockey and we placed third um, in, an, in a tournament, which again was a fantastic achievement considering that we didn't train together and um, we just trained with our own clubs. So we were still pushing and we were still trying to um, play as much hockey as possible. In 2015 then, um, our national team ice coach got an invitation, I suppose, of, of a lifetime um, to travel to Moscow um, to play um, in what's known as the Victory Cup over there. Um, this was to be held at the Winter Ice Palace in Moscow where the 2016 IAHF World Championships um, were to be held. So we were actually the first teams to get on the ice and um, to test out the ice, I suppose, for the IAHF uh, World Championships. Um, this tournament um, was one of the best tournaments that I have been at. Um, we were treated like absolute royalty. Um, it was just, it was fantastic. And although we, we didn't have much ice time, as I said, the domes closed now five years at this stage and we had girls maybe traveling to Belfast um, 
some traveling to Belfast, some playing roller hockey, some came back just to travel on this trip because it was just it was a trip of a lifetime. Um, we didn't place in the tournament, unfortunately, but we did actually beat um a Russian team who were established quite a long time. I think they're, they they were playing maybe seven years together, and we, and we managed to beat them. So, you know, we, we did well. Um, and I suppose everyone just kept saying, "Imagine what you'd be like if you had a rink." And I suppose this is the message that, that, that we're trying to get out as an association. Imagine what we would be like with, with a rink. If our government um, could believe in us, if investors could believe in us, we have something great, but we just need somebody else to believe in us. Our members believe, our members are passionate. Our volunteers, parents, coaches, management, they're all passionate. But we just need somebody else to be passionate with us just said we are so passionate about the game so we are not going to give up um at the moment we have a successful ladies inline league and i'd like to thank the inline uh, hockey ireland for their support in this um and we have great collaboration there at the moment and also um a big shout out to dorinda sinton who's putting in phenomenal work with the ladies inline as well um and I suppose this collaboration is is what's driving our sport and is, is what's it's keeping the, the passion alive. Um also I would like to thank the Belfast Junior Giants as they are kindly donating some ice time in the next couple of months um for an all Ireland ladies ice um league. And again, it's it's the generosity of these other associations that are helping us keep the sport um of of ladies hockey alive on the island of Ireland so thank you very much to these people and guys just please support us whenever you can we're not looking for for monetary um assistance as such if you have it great send it on but if you don't just please like share post this anything at all get the word out there that hockey is alive and well in Ireland thank you very much